when I look into all these scenarios, what I see is that people, they want to find a job. That is a mindset. Now I advise all these three guys to find something on your own. So you don't have any risk of finding a job. It is only the risk to find a customer to sell your product. There's no lob, job loss here because the job security, as I told in the last class is dead. Okay, so it's difficult now. Job security is, there's no guarantee for a job. So it is good for you to start a business on your own, okay? Now, if all of you won't start a business, the next question is, what business to start with? Now, some of you might say that I'm an accountant working in one of the construction companies in Qatar, and I want to uh, start a business here. So I earned money doing some accounting work in a company, in an organization, and I want to start a restaurant business in Sri Lanka. Otherwise, I'm an accountant over there, then I won't start a construction business over here. But otherwise, I'm an accountant over there, then I won't start a pharmaceutical company or maybe a pharmacy here. And then my question is, what is the connection between what you do in Qatar and what you try to invest in Sri Lanka? There should be a intimate connection with it. Otherwise, you are very likely to feel, fail the business. The business you are trying to invest in, that should be a very, very much intimately attached to you. Otherwise, you are very likely to fail the business. So the business you do, you should have about three years at least experience behind in the same industry so that you can easily do. I'm having my own business now. I'm having my own university now. I'm providing MBA courses and BBA degree courses at the moment. And then I have about 10 years of experience behind and I'm running the show now on my own. And I have six lecturers working with me. Now the problem is if these six lecturers, they're all employees of mine, when they fail to attend to a class, when they don't want to do the lecture tonight, I am there to jump into the lecture hall to complete the lectures today because I don't want to disappoint my students so that no employees of mine can fail me in any term because I know the business in and out because I have 10 years of experience in that particular business. The same thing applies to you. If you know the business, you don't need to rely on anyone else. So the first law that if you won't start a business, you start the business that you know. Don't start a business on an opinion. Let's say someone says there is a business that is performing very good, that has lots of revenue, that has a growing market. So invest money in that. Don't invest because you don't know the business. If you know the business, go ahead. If you don't know it, don't rely on the opinion of the others. That is why I'm calling it, you got to do the business, the business you know, number one, the law number one. Number two, when you won't start the business, always start it alone. You run the show alone, one man show. You run the show alone. That is good for you because you have lots of costs you can cut. If you have employees, you have the, the payment of that. And then you have to invest a lot of money on that because employee recruitment, uh, 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 maintenance, workplace, office, and so on. There are so many things involved in because if you start a business, it takes another three years for you. You have 10 years of business experience that you worked for. Meantime, you may have to spend another three years to learn the business you are doing. First hand information, running a business on your own. During that time, you are not able to afford certain costs so that I'm advising you to start the business on your own. The business I'm proposing, you don't need to make hell of money within the first three years. You only invest things and you get something what you could. And after the third year, you start cashing it up. Then money will flow. You can pump the money into the account. That should be the order. So that I'm calling this business, the business you won't start, that should be a one man show to start. You run the show along. And look at this, I'll give you some examples on this. Look at this, this guy here, Mr. Virat Kohli, he's a one man show. He run the show on his own. The highest earning athlete in India and seventh or sixth uh, highest earning athlete in the world, okay? And then the guy is just about 30 years or early 30s. And the guy is earning hell of money, millions in dollar. One report, according to my understanding, $247 billion, a million dollars per year. That's the earning and one man show. He knows his business. He knows how to play the shot. He knows how to endorse the deals. He knows how to, how to do deals with these advertising companies and he is earning hell of money. One man show. Let me show you some more. 
Look at this guy, the highest earning coach in the world in, in, in cricket industry. And he is a, a one man, single, a single, a simple man. And he is the one uh, having that business on his own. And if you have a look at this, Tony Robbins, one of the life coaches in the world, number one, and uh, uh, one of the highest earning life coaches. Okay, if you want to get some consultation, you may have to wait for months. And his consultations, you have to pay a big amount of money to consult you to coach you personally. And you can still read his books, though you can't afford to meet him in terms of getting an appointment, meeting him, uh, visiting him, going to America, getting uh, the payment done to him, all our expenses or expensive things, so that you can associate with him reading his books. He has lots of books, and I can share books with you if you want. Uh, that is again a one-man show. Look at this, Roger Federer. Now, the guy is another one-man show. He is into his uh, tennis industry. And the guy spent loads of money during this COVID to look after, to, to fund these victims of COVID. So one man show again. And another one, if you take this, Cristiano Ronaldo, Ronaldo, the guy, highest earning footballer in the world at the moment, I think. And the guy is earning hell of money. The guy doesn't know what to do with the money. Loads of charity, loads of money, loads of money he's pumping into the society to look after the people because he has overflow surplus of billions of dollars and one man show. Okay, so look at this, Shah Rukh Khan, the guy used to work for 100 rupees per day and uh, one of the highest earning uh, film uh, star in Bollywood, Hollywood industry, uh, film industry, the guy is again a one man show, owning lots of companies, owning uh, lots of uh, uh, different businesses and, and having his own cricket club and so on. So the guy, again, one man show. Now, this applies for personals as well. Now, when I say all these examples, you would think, how can I be a big cricketer? How can I be a good, a big number one tennis player? How can I be Shah Rukh Khan? Uh, it's a valid question. What I say is this, how can't you be the number one tuition master in your, in your city? Can't you be the number one marketer in your company? Can't you be number one uh, lecturer in your university? Can't you be the number one principal for a school? Can't you be the number one CEO in, a, in an industry? You can. Right, so I'm comparing these ball games and these music industry games and, and film industry games to a business. Business is a game. And if you can train yourself, you can invest your time in that, you can be easily be number one, number two, number three. Then you will be earning the number one, number two, number three of whatever the industry pays for the top three people. So it is highly possible. So what I say is start a business that way. If you are a teacher, try to become number one teacher in the city. Right. If you are a lecturer, try to not become number one lecturer in the market. Let's say if you go to Colombo market, you have uh, lots of professional courses running. CIMA, CMA, uh, AAT, uh, CIM, ACCA. There are so many courses they are all being run. And then these are all thought or these are all thought by professional lecturers. All those lecturers are uh, sold for higher price because the lecturer profile. Can you be number one lecturer to teach marketing? Then you earn high uh, amount of payments. And can you be number one lecturer for some accounting subjects? Then you may be earning the highest price. Now, my question is, how many of these lecturers, uh, please can you stop writing on the board, please? Uh, how many of these lecturers, how many of these, uh, these marketers, how many of these CEOs spend some time personally to develop themselves to be number one in the market in their particular field in that particular industry. That's a question. And I'm going to answer that question tonight. So let's have a look at it. To understand this, I'll tell you the first thing. The, the second law, the, the laws following that, the next law is when you enter into the business, any industry you wanted to, you have to spend at least three years to really cash the investment up. It takes time, three years. Most of us, we can't wait for more than six months. Six months over, and you think that there's no cash flow, otherwise the profit you make is not fair enough for you, so that you take an exit, early exit, premature exit. And you have only got another half a year or half a month or half a, or six or two, three months to cash it up, but you take early exit. Just before you cash it up, you take an exit because you can't wait. So what I say is any business you do, you need at least about three years time to master in that, to take the cash the way you want it. I'm calling it a PhD. The reason is 
if you go to any university here to do a PhD, they propose your topic to study. Otherwise, you propose on yourself to study a topic. And that topic, you study that for three years. In other words, you study about 1,800 years over three years so that you can master in that particular topic. When you master in that particular topic, nobody have the question, nobody have any argument with you when you talk about that particular topic because they know you are the master. That is what PhD is about. So my idea is, any business you do, any business you do, you should do a PhD on that to get the cash. You may be getting some money that is absolutely fine to survive your business. I'm not talking about surviving here. You do business to make multiple thousands of dollars at once. That is why you do the business. If you want to survive, you can easily work for a company. I'm not talking about surviving here. I'm talking about earning multiple dollars, multiple thousands of dollars at once quickly, quick earning. So that you have to wait for three years, do the PhD and cash it up easily. The money will easily follow. Uh, the next thing is when you start the business, the next law is the business you, you, you do should be something so light. Now I'm using a picture here, a slight pigeon, a beautiful, sexy, attractive, seductive bird in your hand. That is your business. Okay, now this business is very easy for you to manage. This is very easy to maintain. The cost is very cheap. And if you want to move from one city to another, you can bring the bird with you. And if you want to, if you don't want the bird, if you don't want the business, you can let it fly. It's easy. Exit from a business is also easy. If you have a business like this, a big elephant, though your business is closed, you may still have to look after the elephant. Otherwise, the elephant will destroy you if you don't feed him. And don't need to own a business like that to start it with. We have to have a lightweight business, lightweight business. And that business will easily earn a lot of money. There is no law that your business have to be heavy to earn heavy money. You can have lots of light businesses, but it can earn heavy money. That is what you have to figure out. Lightweight business, less employees, less maintenance costs, uh, less investment. Startup cost is very easy. Maintenance is very easy. Turnable, U-turnable, disposable, all this kind of business. But it makes hell of money. It makes bulk of money, lamp sum. Okay, that is how we have to figure out the business. We should not do a business that has the heavy cost to maintain. If you take a restaurant, it has the heavy cost. If you talk about a food city or a supermarket, it has a heavy cost. You don't start that kind of business straight away now. If you have enough money to pump into those businesses, yes, starting is not right with that kind of business. You have to start it on your own personal self-services corporation. So that is what I, I wanted to carry through today. So a lightweight business, what you are expert in, start it with and do the business for three years and take the profit or look about, the, or think about the profit after that, after three years. That is what the idea. Now, to run this business, I was talking about these previous guys in here. There are professional people in the prospective industry. And I'm not talking about uh, a qualification here to do this business. The question is, do you need to be qualified to, do you need to be qualified to do a business? The answer is no, you don't need to be qualified. Okay. Uh, if you take your classroom, the classroom you studied, if you have gone to a discipline, decent school, you would see 25% of the top people, 25% of the top people they study well, they get good results, and they enter into a university, they become doctors, they become engineers, they become lawyers, accountants, and those big professionals. And who are in the middle, about 50% of the people, they become, uh, uh, they, they, they go to these professional courses like AZZA, AAT, those kind of courses, and then they, they, they go for classes outside because they don't have an opportunity to go to the university. And then they finish these courses and they find, uh, jobs in organizations like bankers, managers, uh, CEOs, uh, smaller companies, and so on. That is what the 50% does. And the bottom 25%, they have no option as such. They can't enter into the university and they can't afford an education in terms of money, maybe in terms of their learning capacity. They can't do it. So what they do, they have no any other option. They straight away go to the market. And I have brought in one example here. Look at this, Mr. Dharmadasa, Deshamani Dharmadasa. This guy is the guy owning the Navaloka hospitals and several other Navaloka, Navaloka uh, industries. There are different companies. Now the guy, he is from this bottom level. 
And the guy entered into Navaloka hospitals, otherwise into that industry, when he's so young, after school, maybe he left uh, the school and he left to the market. And these doctors, what they do from the same class, they spend six years in the university. And after that, they got to come to the hospital to work and they inevitably work for this guy. This is the story. <laughs> So they inevitably work for this guy. Now, my answer is the doctor works for Mr. Dharma Dasa is one doctor. If you say X doctor, Dr. X, he works for this personality. He is one doctor. But this Mr. Dharma Dasa is thousand doctors. He's equal thousand doctors because he's owning thousand doctors in his hospital. He treats thousands of patients a day. But a doctor, individual doctor in the same hospital, he can treat only 10 or 15 or 100 patients a day. So that is the capacity we are talking about. So the, the idea is whoever they enter into this enterprising to run their own thing, they enter here with no qualification. That is what I meant here. You don't need any qualification. You don't need any qualification to enter any business, okay? but you need to be educated. The guy knows the business inside out. He knows the business upside down. He knows the business from the bottom to the top and top to the bottom. And he plays the role. So these two parties, these two parties from the same class, they'll come and work for this guy. But his teacher said in the school, you are not good enough to go to the university and you are at the bottom level. You can't do anything in life. That is a message, very unfortunate. So, if you are here, that's the root of you. And if you are here, that's the root of you. And if you are here, that's the root of you. Now, when these guys, the top 25% of the guys, when they enter into market to earn their money, this guy is already six years experienced in the business. Okay, so you have lost, I'm not discouraging, don't go to the university or don't go to these ACCA or professional qualification uh, courses. That's not the message. My message is, doesn't matter wherever you go, don't, don't deny your access to the business. Immediately after school, kick off to the business. You do that, meantime, you can study anything you wanted to. So the mindset of us doesn't allow us because your parents, they say, you got to be a doctor, you got to be an engineer, you got to be an accountant, otherwise you, you should be a failure, okay? They don't open anything to you. They never let you to start something on your own. They discourage you. That's the experience I have. So let's go further. Now we have to figure out what this business is about, what business that fits me. That's the first next question we have to answer. To do this, let me explain certain things in here. If you take an organization, you have functions in organization. Let's say, if you take one university, they have the teaching faculty, they have academic department where they have lecturers, they do teaching. And that university have the marketing department, they do marketing to recruit students. And they have the sales department, they do the, they, they do the sales. And they have the services and support, student support, student services department, that, that's the word. And you have this research and development or otherwise learning and development. You have to develop new courses, new trainings to sell in the market. These are all functions. Meantime, your same university have IT function, accounting function, human resources function. Human resource function means we know that, but I'm just considering people uh, with some less experience or school leavers. So uh, recruiting people, bringing new, new employees is what we call HR function. So that is that. And then uh, you may need to have some security there you may have to have some legal department you may have to have some logistics department these are all functions every organization every university every pharmaceutical company every construction company should have otherwise you may not be able to run the course run the business so if you want to do a business you have all of these functions you need to produce something you need to sell that and you have to collect the money you have to do this kind of thing so now these are the functions of any organization. Let me take these functions, the same functions that exist in you individually as well. In my case, I have my marketing function. I do lots of marketings and promotions and I have my sales function. I have my teaching function. I have my accounting function. I have my 
my, my research and development function. I have my IT function. All these things I do myself personally. You also do the same thing. So if you are an individual or if you are an organization, all of those functions I'm mentioning here, you do it. You do marketing. Let me exemplify that. You have your own Facebook account where you promote yourself. You take pictures, you take selfies, you take uh, whatever the things you do, and then you put that on the Facebook to promote yourself, to tell them that I'm so-and-so. That is promotion. Companies, they do the same thing. They take pictures, they post advertisements and so on, and that is coming on the Facebook. That is about marketing. And then you have your purchasing function. You purchase your food, you purchase your electricity, utilities, you purchase your clothing, you purchase your education and so on. You do that purchasing function. An organization, they also do. They purchase raw material, they purchase from suppliers, they purchase electricity, they purchase IT uh, instruments like computers, and they do it. Right. So if I if I talk about this legal department again, you have your legal department. Sometimes if you want to buy a property, buy a, buy a property, you need to add, get some advice from a lawyer. That is the legal department. Though you don't have one, you employ someone to do it. That is what the legal department is about. So you have one, and companies as well when they have some legal concerns, legal transactions, when they do some transaction that is involved in some legal uh, issues, they have lawyers. <coughs> That is the legal department. So again, my message, every single function and organization work with, you also have it, All right? Having said that, let me come to this. In this, if you are a lecturer, you may be here. This is the faculty or this is the, the, the department you work for. In my case, if I work for a university, I work here as a lecturer, right? Now, if you, I'm a lecturer, okay? The other functions here, there are different people, they do these functions, okay? I don't do those, I only do this, right? Right, now, in an organization, lecturing is the key function because that is where the production is. That is what, that, that, that is the production, that is what we teach, that is what we sell, academic department, that is where the production is taking place. Now, producing anything is not going to make the money, you have to definitely market that and sell that to some personal. That is the lifeline of a business. If you don't sell it, you don't get any cash flow in and you, don't, you won't be able to, to survive. If you don't have income, you won't be able to survive. So any function a, 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 a organization, an organization does, you have to always accompany that with the sales and the marketing. If you don't sell it, you can't survive. So that is a lifeline. Now, because of this reason, I'm calling these, all these departments into three different categories. Number one, this is the production department where we produce things, academic department, designing department, research and development department, where we produce things. On the other side, we have the revenue department where that sells things and that brings the money. The rest of it is this, the technical or supportive department. Now, the most crucial department. Otherwise, the highly paid department in an organization is this. If you work for a marketing department of an organization, you can do a deal with your boss. Boss, this month, I'll bring $1 million in cash through my sales. Out of that, you pay me 15% of commission. He would say, yes, bring the money. Let me pay. You can do, do the business. You can bargain with him. That is where I'm talking, marketing is one of the key function no one can ignore. Doesn't matter what you do, you may be a lecturer, you may be an IT expert, you may be an accountant, doesn't matter what, but you should know the marketing function very powerfully, otherwise you can't drive any revenue. In my experience, I have colleagues, they have multiple masters, they have PhDs, they have multiple degrees, and they are broken, we call them the broken genius. They have enough of knowledge, but they are poor. I have one colleague, he is a PhD in economics. The guy teaches economics, okay? He, he teaches economics for master's level. Now the guy, if the salary is delayed by two, three days, the guy calls me and can I borrow some money from you, Machan? The reason is because he doesn't have enough savings. Now my question is, you have your PhD in economics, and then you are economically very poor. What is the connection of your PhD and your economy? You're talking about economics and you're economically poor. This is why I'm connecting this, the marketing and sales. You have enough knowledge, but you don't know how to brand yourself, 
how to market yourself, how to sell this for a higher price. That is where you lose your business. That is when you become a broken genius. You have enough things, but you don't know how to sell. So my, my, my consultation here is that doesn't matter what you sell, doesn't matter what you produce. If you don't know how to sell it, your production is going to be dumped with no price. So you should be mastering in what you produce, that is up to you. And you should master in the marketing and the sales as well. So you should give enough time to give the punch to your sales and the marketing. It is not only about promoting yourself in the Facebook. Let's say if I'm a lecturer, I can promote myself as a lecturer by using my marketing and sales skills. So if I have, if I can do some uh, lecturing or some training, I can sell that for a higher price if I can sell that, if I can market it. Otherwise, I know how to teach. I have the training, I have the coaching, but I don't have money because I can't sell it. I have a product. So I have to master in this production and I have to master in this as well. You don't need to master in this because you can hire people easily to do this. The highly paid department in the organization is this number one, number one. Number two is the production department and the rest is number three, okay? So you have to be powerful in producing what you produce. If you are a tuition teacher, master in that and try to market that. If you are a, a cricketer, try to master in your game and try to promote yourself to the selectors, then you get your thing. And if you are a, a powerful singer, try to master in this singing uh, industry or music industry, and then try to sell that for a higher price. So that is what I'm calling. So now, in your case, you may have a confusion now, which industry I am into? Which industry I am into? Let me tell you this. I was talking about departments here, research and development, designing, academic department, marketing, sales, and so on. All these departments are individually an industry on the other side. Let me tell you this example. Now let's say, uh, if we take marketing, marketing is a function of an organization. Meantime, marketing is the business of East West Marketing Company. That, that is owned by Navaloka Group. This is a company, their business is marketing. They don't produce anything. They import things and they market those, okay? And there are so many, uh, Microsoft resellers, authorized resellers in, in, in Sri Lanka. They don't produce any software. They only buy software from Microsoft and they sell it. Sales, marketing, they don't do anything. And there are companies, what they do, they do these services and support. In an organization, you may have your own services and support department. They provide the services, they provide the support to maintain your building, maybe the office building, maybe they look after the ACs and so on. But repairing ACs, maintaining AC is another business run by separate companies, right? Meantime, we are talking about IT. IT is a function of every single organization and you have your IT function, I have my IT function. I'm sitting down here uh, to do this lecturing. I have my iPad before me, I have a laptop open before me and I have my internet working on, on the other side and I have my phone is uh, on as well. So that I'm having this, IT system here, otherwise I can't deliver this course. So that is my IT. And this IT is a business and that is the only business of some other company, which is uh, an example would be Microsoft. And every single organization has its accounting function. Okay, I have my accounting function. I know how much money is getting uh, pumped into my account monthly or weekly. And after my lectures, I know how many hours I have done, what's the price of it and what this organization should pay me and so on, I know. And I have an idea about the balance of my account, what is the balance and so on. Now, this accounting is the function of me. On the other side, the same accounting is a business of some other organization. If you take KPMG, if you take Ernest Young, these are all companies, their business is to maintain the accounts of other companies, that's the business, all right? Now, again, if you take a company, uh, uh, another big company, they have the security department where they maintain the the security of the building, or whoever enters the building, whoever leaves the building, what are the properties you have, what are the assets you have, these security guards are the responsible personals for that. Now, providing security is another business, okay? And some banks, if you take banks, they have the legal department where you have lawyers sitting down. And if there's a default of uh, borrowed money, those lawyers, what they do, they, they go behind those people to get the money back. Otherwise, they, 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 they 
file a case against them to get the money uh, covered from these uh, default debtor. That is the legal department. Now there are businesses, legal businesses, they only do the legal business. That is what we call the legal firms. Okay, so that business is providing legal advices, providing legal services, documentation, court cases, filing, and so on. Right. So, my next message on this slide is: every single function we see here is a business alone. Is a business alone. Now, let me tell you this: if you know this point here, you should understand. If you work for, I, I said every single function is a business here. Now let's say marketing is a business alone. Sales is a business alone. R&D is a business alone. So let me ask you a question. If you work for a bank, if you work for a bank, what industry are you in? The answer you would give me, you work for a bank. Then if I ask you what industry are you in, you would say I'm into banking industry. Then I have a counter question immediately if you are into banking industry, do you sell money for money? Is your income is coming from interest? Do you charge interest from customers, or from your customers? Do you have your own customers? How much money do you have so that you can lend that for, for, for a customer to earn some interest? You will answer no to all of these questions because you never sell your money. You never get poly or interest from anyone. And your income is not the interest that earn uh, on yourself. What you do is the bank. Well, there's a message. Let me read that message later. The bank you work for, the bank you work for, the bank has the money. The bank sell the loan, but you do the sales for them. You actually do the marketing and the sales. You don't sell money off you. You never earn any poly or any interest because you never sell the money. What you do, you sell something which the bank wants to sell. So you work for a bank as a market. The industry of the bank is banking or financial industry. Your industry is not finance. Your industry is marketing, okay, right? Marketing, that is, that is the message. This is what you have to clearly understand. Most of us, we don't have any idea. If I work for an organization, if I work for a university, my industry is not qualification. I'm not selling any qualification. I'm not giving any certificate. What I do is teaching. So my industry is teaching. My industry is coaching. My industry is mentoring. My industry is training and development of individual. That's the industry I'm into. I'm not into certificate industry. I'm not into qualification industry. University is into, right? And if you go to this, if you take a doctor, doctor is not into healthcare industry. Mr. Dharmadasa is into healthcare industry. Navaloka is into healthcare industry. Every single doctor working in the hospital, they're not into healthcare industry because they don't have their own pharmacy. They don't have their own facilities. They don't have their own labs to do the testings and investigations. They don't have any nurses working for them and so on. What they do, they have the industry, we call it human body maintenance. That's the industry you are into. And we have to salute these doctors because taking risk of life, they're looking after all these COVID infected patients. That is the salutation goes to them. That's not what I mean. What I mean is a doctor, if you are a doctor, if you work for a hospital, you are maintaining a personal in health condition, in healthy condition, that's what you do. You don't have a healthcare industry because you don't have any such things. You don't have a hospital. You don't have doctors working for me. You don't have x-ray machines and so on. So now we know clearly what industry we are into. A personal in the bank, he is a marketer. Okay, he's a marketer. He's into marketing industry. And a personal working for a university, he is into the, the training industry. A doctor working in the hospital, he is into human body maintenance industry. Now, the next message I want to touch here is this. <clears throat> if you can sell some products of a bank, if you can do some marketing of some loans, is it possible for you to sell a car? Is it possible for you to sell some, uh, some building materials? Is it possible for you to sell some pharmaceutical medicines? Is it possible for you to sell a house? Answer is yes, because you are a marketer already. If you are a marketer, if you can sell something, you can sell anything, okay? 
So if you want to select your industry, you never select the banking industry, you select your marketing industry. That is your industry, marketing industry. A banker used to work for a bank to sell loans for a bank can sell anything. So you can start a company selling something. To sell something, you don't need to produce anything. You simply buy and sell. Otherwise, there are models. You don't need to bring in any inventory to your factory. You order something somewhere and you do the sales directly to your customer. You only mediate these two parties. You make your commission. You make your business. Okay. So marketing. Now, the next thing is about lecturing. Now, lecturers, if you work for a university, if you call yourself, I'm into qualification industry, I'm into... I'm into qualification industry, you're going to limit yourself to a university. Now, in my case, I used to work for a university, for, work for three universities for the last seven years, actually. And, and uh, that has given me enough flavors in my industry. I can do trainings for anyone. I can do consultation for anyone. I can motivate anyone. That is the industry I'm into. So I don't limit myself to that university. If the university is shut, I don't mind because other institutions are open. I can go and do some trainings for them. So the industry is vast. If I can train someone in a university, I can train one, train anyone in any industry. So my industry is vast and I'm clear about my industry. If you know your industry, the next thing is, the next question I have asked, I have to ask you is this. Now you see, you work for a bank as a banker and then you know you are a marketer and you know the bank's industry is finance, your industry is marketing. Now, if you know your industry is marketing, my question is, when did you study about your business? You never study about finance because finance is not your business. You study about marketing. When did you read? When did you go for a workshop? When did you listen to some YouTube video clips to learn how to market things? You would say, I can't remember. And if you say, I can't remember that when I took a, a knowledge, when I took some time to learn something about my industry, uh, if you say you don't know, you can't remember then how come you expect your income to grow? How come you want your boss uh, to pay you more increment? How come you want your boss to promote yourself to the next level? You can't expect because personally, you have never grown in your own industry. Your boss wants you to sell loans. Your boss wants you to market loans and you never learned about marketing. So how come you get yourself to the next level? So you got to work on this, okay? So the, the reason why you never touch these marketing books or marketing workshops or marketing trainings or marketing learnings, you never had a clear picture about what industry you are into. That is why you never learned it, okay? So a marketer, you should learn this marketing area. A lecturer, you should learn about this coaching industry. Uh, workshops on how to train people, how to do lecturing, how to deliver speeches and so on. Maybe you may have to enter into YouTube channel. There are tutorials to learn from. A doctor, if you are a doctor, then you have to learn all of those new magazines, new, uh, new journals, new developments in scientific researches in medicines and so on. So that you can become a powerful mechanic or powerful body maintenance engineer. In other words, doctor. So we have to understand this. We have to understand this very clearly first. Now, the next thing, after knowing all of this, let me tell you where your business is. Let me take an example here. If you are a marketer, and if you work for the marketing uh, marketing of an organization, marketing department of an organization, what you do, you may be here in the bottom level, okay? You may be a marketing asset calling that you're going to master in marketing. If I'm calling you to master in your marketing, you have to promote and manage. Now, getting a self-promoter may be a dream because there are politics in organization, there are barriers in organization, and people above you, they don't want you to grow further. So there are barriers. So I don't want your boss to give you a letter that I have promoted you. I don't want, others, otherwise I'm not recommending, otherwise I'm requiring you to have a letter from your boss to promote you to the next level. But the promotion is totally depending in you. Let's say you can promote yourself from one level to the other. But if you know 
how to do the job of an assistant, okay, you can do it. And if you learn how to do an, uh, a job of an executive, then you can, you can be an executive. And if you know how to do the manage, marketing manager's work, then you are the marketing manager. That is enough because if you want to run your business on your own, you don't need to have this kind of recommendations. You, know, you don't need to have the qualification or letters that you are a marketing manager. Now you can run your own business. You don't need, need such things. So all you need is the education. You got to learn this, not the qualification. Education, not the qualification. So let's say you are here, you are here, and then your marketing manager is off sick. He's suffering from Corona. So the guy has been quarantined for next two weeks. Now your company has to run somehow. If you can do the work of the marketing manager, whatever he does, and you are the marketing manager, your, does, your boss doesn't have to give you a correct, a correct certificate to tell you that you are capable of this. If you are capable of that, you are on top of it. Now, this is what I'm calling your business. You can take an exit from that, you hijack that department, okay? And if you are the number one person in the business, sometimes you can challenge your boss, tell the boss, boss, I'm going to do this business. I'm going to bring in this amount of money to this organization. And I want you to pay me this amount of money. And you do a deal. You can challenge him. Otherwise, the boss might understand. You never, you never go for that big argument. However, your boss might understand if you don't offer this, if you don't provide what he wants, he may simply take the whole customers and the business to his competitors. Or else he can think of owning his own thing. That is how powerful you should be. So if you're so powerful, you can bargain. I have seen uh, an institution a couple of uh, months ago, about five months ago, that was running ACCA courses. And there were three lecturers, I know all of them. Those lecturers, they had some, some uh, uh, disagreement with the management. So, the, so then, because the lecturers, the students were there, not for the business, but for the lecturers. The lecturers are so uh, highly profiled people. And then they, they wanted the management to do certain things for the lecturers, but they didn't do it. So what they did, they made the institution shut within one week. They immediately took out the business, they hijacked the business, and they went into some other different building, opened the business, and every single student studying in this particular previous organization, they switched them to that new organization. That organization got shut now, okay? So I'm not saying that sack your boss and put your boss out of the business. What I say is you have to come to that powerful point so that you can challenge your boss. Okay, otherwise you can open things on your own. So any department you work for, if you are on the top, you don't need to get the characteristic or correct certificate of your boss, but if you have your own recommend, own recommendation, own character that I'm so-and-so, I can do this, I have the guts, then you can hijack the business, you can do the business. So whatever the department you work for, if you come to the top and that is your business, and if you are a lecturer, you can travel from long road and then you can come to that top level and that is your business. Okay, so let me exemplify this using some other different pictures here. If you want to be a lecturer, number one lecturer, now you may be joining an organization here, assistant lecturer, senior lecturer, then you can promote yourself to the position of a dean. And if you are the dean, then you have the full, full faculty that can deliver any, any course for your students. Now, if you can deliver that, the next thing is you need to know some marketing, how to sell what you can produce, okay? The same thing applies if you want to be the marketing uh, business as well. You may be here, as I, as I told before, assistant marketer, executive, and marketing manager. Now, you go to the top that way. So, to do this, as I said in the previous class, you need some changes. Let's say, if you want to promote yourself from here to this, promote yourself from here to this, all you need is to do some changes. Now the changes I'm talking about, the changes I'm talking about is this. Now let's say if you want to be the number one lecturer, you may have to spend more time on your PowerPoint slides to develop your contents. You may have to spend more time on the YouTube and you may have to mo spend more time on the Google. You may have to spend more time on networking to find some opportunities to sell your lecturing uh, courses. And you may have to buy a camera to record your lecturing to see what you deliver the course, how you deliver the course, how quality it is, and what are the improvements needed, and so on. And you have to definitely look after your body, maintaining your food habit and your body uh, shape. Because if you are a lecturer, you may have a big belly before your body, and you can't go before people and deliver course. People will fall sick. Otherwise, people, your students will fall asleep. 
because you know you look sleepy so you have to work on your body as well these are the changes i'm talking about and then some other changes you may have to look into if you are a smoker if you are a drunkard if you drink alcohol you can't prepare yourself before you go or if, before you walk inside the lecture hall and you can't go into the lecture hall under the influence of alcohol either and if you are a, a, a chain smoker if you are continuously smoking you can't go with that tobacco bad smell to the lecture hall so you got to stop those maybe and then if you sleep too much you can't go to the lecture hall with a sleepy face so you have to bring that sleeping hours down to some other minimum hours so these are all changes we are looking for and then the 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 message is if you want to be a marketer and again you may have to do certain changes maybe you have to learn something from the youtube you may have to learn about marketing from marketing books and trainings and stuff again i'm talking about this uh this body shape if you are a marketer if you have a big shabby body how come you walk inside the market how can you walk inside the market to speak to your customers because you are tired after you have your heavy lunch and you can't go to the market and then if you you can't walk to your customers so you got to be physically fit mentally fit so that i'm recommending to do some gym to do some uh discipline in your food these are all things that you could do to make yourself a powerful marketer to own your marketing business right now again if you are uh, smoking again you may become tired let's say if you are a marketer you have to go organization to organization sometimes when you want to do this if you are a smoker you you get tired very frequently and how come you visit a marketer without smoking habit he may visit 10 places to market his things and the marketer with smoking habit he can visit only two or three places to sell his things so that you can compare the the difference here so these are all things that you got to change now the next thing is about this this is the final a very important message tonight uh to do all of these changes i told you uh, the type of business you could start and the type of changes you have to do now look at this this graph the strategy to change yourself to become number one in your industry i'm calling this an r daily strategy the name is an r daily okay that's the strategy right now if you are into marketing industry or if you are into personal life coaching industry if you are into lecturing industry if you are into hr industry if you are into accounting and finance industry any industry you want to doesn't matter what now if you have certain knowledge you are likely to earn certain amount of money then if you work an hour daily on learning the change i'm talking about is just the learning part of it if you can learn your learning curve is here learning curve if you learn one hour daily about your marketing about your lecturing at the end of the first week you are likely to finish one book end of the first month you are likely to finish four books end of the first year you are likely to finish 15 books end of the third year you are likely to finish about 150 books and that is the phd i'm talking about three years of continuous work one hour daily you will master in that topic you will be the national champion okay this is established truth this is an established truth if you if you read about 150 books i am calling it books it's make it it is to make it easy if you learn 150 equal 100 i'm sorry if you learn if you if you learn one hour daily for three years in any topic you are into in any field you are into you will be a phd in that okay and you'll be a top earner look at this when you go about learning in your learning curve your income is getting doubled okay 1x is getting 2x here that is getting double here and double here that is how the learning is and you don't experience this in your life the reason is because you don't know what industry you are into and you don't know Uh, you never engaged in learning in that industry that is why in my case i know my industry and i am learning every single day at least 5 hours on my industry so that i'm experiencing the, the the multiplication of my income very very clearly right so the same thing applies to you whatever the industry you wanted to whatever the industry you are into you have to learn at least an hour a day then you can master in that and i'm calling this here This is a good book from Anthony Robbins uh, Wake the Giant Within. 
that is a great book. If you want, I can share it with you. Learn that book. That will give you the idea. Okay. So now, if you are into any industry, if you are into marketing, learn about marketing one hour daily. If you are into lecturing, learn about one hour about lecturing. If you are into HR practices, learn about one hour and you will master. That's a strategy. You don't need to spend longer time on that. Okay. So let me clear my message to you. Tonight, I have given you an idea about the business. If you want to start, you should start the business on your own. Uh, one man, single man show. You run the show alone to start the business with. Okay. Then after that, you can recruit people. Number two, the business you start with, that should be something very light. You should uh, easily manage that. You shouldn't have a big cost to start it with, and you shouldn't have a big maintenance cost to maintain that business either that way. Number, number two or number three. And number four, the next, next message that you need to clearly know which industry you are into. You may be working for a bank, but you are a marketing person and all that. You may be working for a hospital, but you may be a a doctor into maintaining patients or human body that that message that that's industry you need to so you should know that number two number three you should study at least an hour on that so that we can develop a business on our own we can go to the top level in that industry now let's say if you take the lecturing industry there are so many lecturers they 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 earn different amount of money now, if you take it, the top 20% of the lecturers, they earn the 80% of the salaries of lecturers that the market pays, right? Let me come back again to the statement. You may be a lecturer and there are lecturers and the top 20% of the lecturers in the market, they earn the 80% of the lecturing salary in the market. The remaining 20% is distributed among the bottom 80% of the lectures, right? So now, if you want to become within the first 20% of the lecturers, first 20% of the doctors, first 20% of the marketers, you have to be within the first 20%. And if you want to be within the first 20% of within that profession, you have to learn one hour daily continuously for three years. And that is it. Let me come back to this statement with some example. Let's say, you have doctors. I know doctors. I have my family. I have uh, my, my cousins that are doctors. I have my friends that are doctors. And I have my doctors that I take my family members for clinics as well. Now, if you go to the hospital, there are doctors. Those doctors, they take huge money daily. Whereas there are same doctors from the same university. They are waiting for shift basis work to take some money. Whatever the money, those big doctors, they leave it. I don't need that money. That is the money these people, they take. What I say is 80% of the doctors, top earning doctors, they take the eight, I'm sorry, 20% of the top earning doctors, they take the 80% of the money. An example, 20% of the top doctors, high earning doctors, they take the 80% of the money home. And the remaining 20% of the money is distributed among the 80% of the low earning doctors. Now, if you want to earn the, the money of these 20% of them, all you need to do is every day, one hour, develop yourself personally, continuously for three years, you will experience that difference. That's the message. That's my experience as a lecturer, as a trainer. Okay. So now we have some work to do. Look at this. You have to explain the company or the industry you work for. If you work for a hospital, what is the industry of the hospital and what is your industry? If you work for a bank, what is the industry of the bank and what is your industry? You have to clearly understand this. Number two. Uh, so that's, that's the one. The, the industry of the company and industry of you your industry, company's industry. And what is your position in the industry and how can you bring your position with a business plan to make it an industry, a business for you? For example, if you work for an university as a lecturer, university's business is qualification, providing qualification. And your business is training, teaching people. And your position may be a senior lecturer. Now, how can you bring this senior lecturing position the next level to the dean and from the dean how can you set your own training institution and if you are a marketer your 
company is bank, they are into finance industry, they, send, they sell money for money, and your industry is marketing, and what is your position, uh, junior marketing, uh, otherwise junior banker or banking assistant or so, whatever, and using this expertise, how can you become a marketing industrialist? How can you become a, a personnel to own a company that markets things for companies, right? And this is a role, you know, what I'm talking based here is totally on the services industry, right? When you want to start a business, don't start any business connected to buying and selling of products. You have to only sell services. It is easy for you. It is easy for you to start it with. After that, think of producing something physically like a product, but services. Because uh, in this business world, services is covering 80% of the sales compared to the products, goods goods because every single good you sell it is connected to services every single product it may be a services you have to sell the service with the service it may be a product you have to sell that product with the service as well. let's say you manufacture cars car is a good it is it is a it is a good okay and when you want to sell that car you need to add some services to that and i am talking about that service uh, toyota can produce the car but you can sell the car for toyota you can buy a Toyota car, otherwise you can be an intermediate personnel, intermediary personnel to, to buy the car from them and deliver that to the customer. You never bring the car, you never make the money, make the payment. The customer will make the payment directly to Toyota, but you will get your commission that way. Okay, service industry. You enter into the industry this way. And then after that, you think of it, when you grow further, you don't need any advice. You would automatically figure out what you should do. Having said that, and that is the end of today's message, so any questions, please uh, let me on the mic for everyone. You can speak to me and you can type your questions as well if you have. And meantime, I have to tell you this, that I'm, uh, I, I will be uh, sharing this YouTube video clip uh, on the cloud and then I'll be giving you the link as well so you can listen to this if you have missed it already. Otherwise, if, you, if I have gone a little bit faster, you can uh, pick it from the YouTube also. And then uh, the other message is I asked you to contact the IT department if you don't have the access to the uh, learning management system. There are documents you can read, there are video clips, you can see there are this document as well. This PowerPoint on the screen is also they are uploaded, so you can have a look at it as well. So you can have a read on that. Be in touch with the LMS, you will automatically motivate yourself. Spend about one hour in my LMS, in that LMS, so that you can read many things, you can listen to YouTube video clips and stuff. So you can automatically promote yourself as a businessman. So engage in that. And if you don't have the access, please contact the number. I gave the number last time also. Let me write it down. 777-21515. The IT guy, the IT manager, he will help you to give you the uh, username and the passwords so you can access to the system. Okay, so now any questions, please? Any questions?